Hello, everybody. My name is David. I didn't forget to say it this time. We just had a very long discussion on how important it is that I do not forget to introduce myself at the beginning of every single video. My name is Inga, and I have been fucking cackling over that shit for the past <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And today, we are going to talk about Metal Family. I've tried to record this video like three times and I uh, by myself and I just cannot fucking get my thoughts out right with no one to bounce off of so I've tried to remedy the situation by inviting Inga to chat with me about it so yeah I'm here <laughs> to save the day today we're gonna talk about metal family because at least I have been very hyped on it for like the past three months <laughs> like we're talking like hyper obsession levels here and uh, for once I've actually been interacting with the fandom which is a thing I never do with fandoms I'm in uh, and I've been making a fuck ton of um, fan art and yeah I made the most amazing fan art of Rad Dad Gustav and I'm you, happy you, with that one you made the most terrible creation in the fucking fan art <laughs> so yeah, I was thinking, since Glam has the most screen time in the show, he's gonna have the most to talk about, so how about we save him for last? Yes. And then we can go youngest to oldest, so that means we start off with Heavy. But first, tell me, what what is Metal Family? Explain to the audience who doesn't know, <laughs> what is Metal Family? <laughs> yeah, we should probably do like a spoiler-free like recommendation thing. In case someone hasn't seen it, and then we'll get into spoilers afterwards. Alright. Hell yeah. Okay, so... Metal Family is a animated cartoon on... free on YouTube. Only 10 episodes. I think if you binge it all in one sitting, it's about... It's a little more than an hour. And it's super, super amazing, and... Me and Inga both love it to bits. It's like a slice of life, following a family who are all metalheads. They all seem to be kind of um, quote-unquote representative of uh, different types of metal. And that sounds gimmicky, uh, and it kind of is, but it's, I was actually really pleasantly surprised that both metal music and family are actually the themes in the show. And if you're just wondering whether you should watch it or not, yes, absolutely, it's missing. I can testify. The first episode is a music video. Uh, that's kind of a prequel, and then... Like a pilot, I guess? Yeah, and then the two first actual episodes are kind of childish, but in a very good way. Um, in a very, like, nostalgic way, I would say. There was something really nostalgic about it to me when I was watching it, at least. I don't know about you. I don't know, I, I, I just kind of like felt like it was, like, introducing what kind of characters we're gonna get a hold of, like, in the first episode. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but, like... You get to know like what kind of parents they are, like Mickey, yeah. uh, Mickey and Heavy. Oh, Glab. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then in <laughs> the next episode, we have a little bit about the kids, how D is like sly and a fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> He's a huge fucking nerd. We'll get into that later. <laughs> yeah, yes. and Heavy is just like I'll fucking beat your ass, no matter what kind of kid. Yeah, that's probably also true, but at least I, when I was little, fucking engaged with a lot of extremely edgy, angsty things, and, um, that's- the, the show has a very, like, self-indulgent, edgy quality that I really like. It sounds like an insult, but I really like it, actually. It, it was the same kind of vibe I got from Sally Face, where it's just, like, edgy and enjoyable because it's edgy. Yeah. It's just like, it puts me back into my f year of 2014. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like, you know, when you get older, like, those those uh, sort of, like, dark, edgy things can be, like, a bit embarrassing to still like. Um, you can't really enjoy it anymore because everyone's super fucking judgy about it. But, like, this was kind of that, and you didn't feel bad about watching it. <laughs> If if that yeah. makes any sense, it's just it's, it's like a, it's like comedy, but it's just like it touches on to like 
the quote unquote edgy community. <laughs> <laughs> quote unquote, yeah. The two first episodes um, are they feel more child childish, and then after the two first episodes, it feels it's still got a lighthearted tone and it's still funny, but it feels like a little more adult humor. And then when we get to the last episode, it gets fucking real, like yikes. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Big fucking yikes. I, that's that's one thing I really like about this show is that it understands that if I don't laugh with a character, I don't care about them. Like if if uh, we hadn't ha- had all those lighthearted funny episodes first, I don't think the heavier episodes would have had like half the impact that they did. Yeah. Yeah. Like like during, like during the the lighter episode, you just like, you just like, feel like you're a part of the family, and then suddenly, you just like get whacked in the head, <laughs> yeah, with like a baseball bat, <laughs> yeah, by that character, <laughs> and you're like, why would you do this? <laughs> why? So yeah, absolutely worth watching. Also worth noting is that, um. As far as I am aware, this show is animated by, like, two people, which I don't know how much you guys know about animation, but that's fucking crazy. <laughs> that's a lot of fucking work. <laughs> yeah, especially for, like, quality of animation, too. Like, I can tell it's flash animation, but it doesn't have the, like, janky, cheap feel that most flash animation does. Like, do no. you know- do you know what I mean? Like, I can't quite describe it in any other way. Fucking- Oh! I, I just thought of the perfect example. Your favorite Martian. The old videos. Uh, to some degree, the new ones too, but especially the old ones. They were like... That's what I think of when I think of Flash animation, but Metal Family really doesn't feel like that. No, they just like... It's, it's like they use uh, Flash to draw the frames instead of like just like having like tweens like puppeteering puppeteering i was actually uh i thought that too when i first watched it but like i rewatched a lot of the episodes and i watched them like super carefully and paid a lot of attention to them there are actually a lot of tweens but i don't i think it's just i can't quite describe what it is that does it i think it's just like the little touches like one thing i noticed very quickly that i was super psyched about was that all of them have like very distinct body language they do like little extra motions that just give them personality most people wouldn't notice whether they did that or not but just that little touch like adds so much oh yeah definitely like little just like a little extra twirl on the fingers or yeah or like there's this one scene where they're just talking and uh the dad is like uh flicking poker chips around in his hand the entire time like that's that's a lot ex- that's a lot extra work to animate but like it adds a lot it is yeah well is there anything else we should mention the spoiler free i guess that's it oh yeah all right uh so yeah go watch it there are several fan dubs in both english and spanish but i always recommend watching things in the original language and of course to support the original artist now yeah. shall we deep deeper dive deeper yes so in case you haven't watched it and just wanted to know uh what it was about that's it we're now going into spoiler territory so spoiler alert yes we are going to be in-depth discussing all of the characters so yes let's go let's start off with heavy um the the littlest boyo in the fam the smallest and most beautiful boy <laughs> A very small child. Often mistaken uh, for a girl. Yeah, though I fucking... I relate to Heavy so much. Just every single person I've ever talked to who's watched the show, when they first saw Heavy, they thought he was a girl. Fucking the... One of the only people that we have seen in the show that hasn't met Heavy before also thinks he's a girl. So like, I was like, mood. (laughs) (laughs) I would say me too, but... <laughs> you are a girl, <laughs> in, in, I in am your a case girl. it's correct. <laughs> so, uh, basically, I made a lot of Metal Family fan comics, and people always ask me which one of them I find the hardest to draw. 
I don't particularly find any of them hard to draw, but I find Heavy the hardest to write because um, he has a very specific mix of like rowdy, fire firebrand, angry, happy-go-lucky uh, extrovert, but he's also like shy, awkward teenager vibes in a very like specific combination that's very hard to nail. Yeah, he's just like a very specific personality. Yeah, like when he goes to get Vicky at the bar, he seems super like shy and awkward around most of them. But then as soon as he's talking, <laughs> talking to Vic, she's just like fucking screaming at all up in his face and fucking getting spit everywhere. And he's just like, yes, <laughs> I'm not affected by this in, in any way whatsoever. Yeah, I guess uh, one of the reasons why Heavy is like shy uh, when going to get Vicky is because there's just like a shit ton of large adult men, like <laughs> yeah. bikers, just like <laughs> drunk as fuck and rowdy and fighting and just like cheering and shit, and they're like covering up the whole floor space, of, and he's just like a tiny child, like 12 years old. Like, of <laughs> yeah. course, he's gonna feel shy. <laughs> yeah, I just th- like, if that had been D, he would have fucking not cared, you know? So, yeah. I think, um, Heavy is like, he has a very, like, shy, polite vibe to him when he's talking to other adults, uh, but when he's talking to, like, his family members, he seems to be pretty fucking unshakably happy. And energetic, and um, we haven't seen him interact with that many other children except uh, Suslik, who he was screaming at. <laughs> so like, <laughs> you know, he's a bit all over the place. Yeah, like I can like kind of identify with uh, Heavy when it comes to being like shy around adult- adults because I was the same kid as he was, just yeah. like walking around with like large, large drunk men trying to find my dad in like <laughs> in like a party like it's not fun <laughs> yeah so heavy i think heavy is the one who's gotten the least screen time out of all of them so he's kind of the one we have the least to go on but just based on actually mostly on the sketches that alina i think she sends sketches when you buy uh some of the merch from their shop people often post pictures of them and based on those it seems like, Heavy is a very creative kid. Like, there was pictures of him with, like, a mask on, and he had, like, painted a little cat face on it, and then there was a picture of him taking a selfie with a cat, but he had put, like, his jacket on the cat, so it looked like it was, like, a person cat. <laughs> <laughs> I like him building, yeah. a, like, a figure with a balloon for a head. Like, he seems like a very creative kid. He is a very creative kid. Uh... Like in a later episode, where his older brother is trying to learn to play guitar, uh, Heavy managed to play the guitar really good, like immediately while, the, while D, the other brother, was struggling. So he seems to have like a natural talent in art. Yeah, he seems to be like artistically inclined. Like maybe, maybe there'll be more about that later. I also know that he likes to play video games. He seems like a completely normal tween. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just just an unusually happy one. He hasn't hit the angst phase yet. <laughs> phase yet. No. For now, he's still our pure little cinnamon roll. He does seem like a trouble kid at school, as in the first episode. He does, like, get sent home uh, with, like, half of his hair cut off <laughs> yeah. by the teacher. <laughs> he, do- he seems like a very specific type of trouble kid, though. Like, he doesn't seem like a bad kid. No, uh, he's just rebellious. He does seem a little stupid, so he might have uh, he might have bad grades, but he just seems like he doesn't like fit in that much. But he doesn't seem to be like rude. He's just very polite, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Heavy's so specific. <laughs> he is. He's very specific, but I like that just about like, him. It's just like, oh, he's so pol- like he's such a polite kid, but goddamn, he is rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And goddamn, he is rebellious, but damn, he is a sweet kid. <laughs> yeah. Like when the teacher is yelling at him about his hair, like he just stands there and listens, because he yeah. won't talk back to an adult. Yeah, and it's just like, you want me to get my dad? And she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one of my favorite episodes. 
<laughs> it is very charming. Oh yeah, do you have any do you have any head cannons about about the cinnamon boy? Uh no, not really. Like it hasn't really been like flushed out that much that I can like that I've managed to spin off anything yet. Yeah. Uh he really has he really hasn't gotten much time yet. I hope there's more episodes of him in uh, the new season. Me too. Like that's like I just want more. I just want more heavy. Heavy, please <laughs> bless us with more of your presence. Shall we move on? Yes. Uh, and it fits at the straight afterwards because I do want to touch on the relationship. But let's talk a bit about D first. All right. Uh, so <laughs> D is a fucking 16 year old angst dream <laughs> he is by far the the fan favorite which makes sense because i think uh, most of the fans are like 16 like around his age yeah so a lot of them are like oh he's so cool <laughs> <laughs> i think he's a fucking nerd <laughs> he is a delight <laughs> he is like oh my god this is exactly how I saw myself as a fucking 14 year old. Yeah. And like, Dee's like also kind of like, like, he's a more stereotypical teenager. But like, he's so delightfully evil. Yeah, even then, like, I feel like Alina keeps being like, no, you don't understand. Dee is like a terrible person and you shouldn't like him. But, but like, all I can see when I look at him is like a fucking insecure fucking tragic teen being like, Rawr, I'm scary. <laughs> <laughs> Rawr, XD. Hear me. <laughs> <laughs> and then with like fucking hella voice cracks. So yeah. I think, I think people's perception of D varies wildly based on how um, old they are. <laughs> Cause you know, my brother is 16 and he is like, he reminds me so much of D. Like he just like goes around talking about how fucking edgy and what a fucking psychopath he is all the time and like he's like oh i'm such a loser <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like oh, you are a fucking nerd <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so first of all he's edgy uh people consider that maybe he um tortures cats in his free time which has a surprising amount of evidence <laughs> to support it oh Please inform me what the fuck this means. <laughs> uh, well, pretty much every time D is seen with anything cat related, he is in extreme disgust. It's clear that he does not like cats at least. Oh, There's shit. also a sketch of him as a as a child with a cat plushie and he's like ripped the head off. And um, there's also a thing that the creator said was like, oh, if there was a kitten on fire, Heavy would um, run and save it. Vicky would run and fucking help because Heavy- But only because Heavy went to save it and then Glam would be fascinated and Dee would be the one who lit it on fire. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is yeah. actually kind of terrifying. <laughs> yeah. And then um, in the guitar episode where he's chatting with someone, that person also has um, a profile picture of like a- It's just like a bloody cat of some sort. But- what I personally think is that he's a fucking edgy teen who is scared of cats and uh, <laughs> tries to be a badass. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he, he is also like just canonically a huge fucking nerd. Definitely. So like he seems to have like respect from his classmates, which I absolutely do not understand. Like he spends his fucking recess reading Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> in full view of everyone. I was just like imagining if a kid like this fucking existed in uh, my school, that would have been fucking wrecked. Maybe it's because he helps uh, people cheat their tests and shit, so they're just like, they gotta, they gotta keep him on his good side. Yeah, yeah, you know what, that might be it. Oh my god, I found another of your fan arts. <laughs> it's the one where he's hanging out with that OC girl, the kawaii one. Yeah, so OCs are like a huge thing in this fandom. It seems to be like their thing. You know, some fandoms just have like very specific areas where it's like super, just so much content of that specific kind. In, in Homestuck it was voice acting. 
in Hatalia it was fan-made games and Metal Family it seems to be OCs but also OCs uh, are pretty common in like a lot of fandoms but also not usually for shows like slice of life shows like Metal Family. No, that's actually pretty true because like you're so invested in the characters. If you think about the fandoms that everyone's like, oh, fucking fan characters and like AUs and shit, it's because it's like interesting to think what that character would be in this world. Like Avatar, for example, they're like, oh, what kind of bender would you be? Or like, yeah. So it surprised me that there were so many in Metal Family, but you know, it's fun. It's fun. And it's worth noting that 90% of the fan characters get shipped with D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he is a yeah. handsome boy. He is a very cute little boy. <laughs> I can't I can't <laughs> quite see him as handsome just because I fucking <laughs> he's so childish. But I do think he's extremely adorable. Yeah. When when I say that D is handsome, I just like I just imagine myself being like, "Oh, isn't like that boy like well, look at that little handsome boy." <laughs> Like I feel like a grandma, you know, and I, I just, I just gonna like pinch his cheek. <laughs> oh, you're such a handsome little boy. He is a huge pretty boy. He's got fucking freckles and fucking on point makeup, and fabulous ass hair. And as I said, I, I, I think most Metal Family fans are uh, around 16, so it would make sense. It would. Cause D is also that age. Now shall we talk about D and Heavy's uh, relationship? Yes. Oh yeah. yeah, also a small detail that I noticed that I feel is very important to mention. I think D is appears in like seven episodes out of the ten that exist, and he rolls his eyes in all but like one of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking eye that rolling That is a very important eyes. detail, fucking... It is. Sassy. I feel like it captures this entire character. It's just his constant eye rolling. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, oh. Even in the pilot episode, where he only appears for like seven seconds, he spends those seven seconds <laughs> rolling his eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it really fucking is. So, uh, fuck, yeah. The end, Fevy. Obviously, they're setting up some sort of con conflict with the fact that D is supernaturally talented and smart in most things, but not in music. Yeah, and Heavy is like very specifically artistic, like uh, very artistic, and manages to like do music very easily. The one character trait that Heavy very clearly has that I that I can think of at least is that he's very honest like he never wants to lie or anything like he gets really upset with Vicky when she admits to um, fucking scamming the people at the bar and he's like mom you can't drive a motorcycle right after you drink and she's like fuck off <laughs> it was alcohol free yes and um, D is basically a grade A liar so I feel like maybe in a future episode there's gonna be some sort of situation where Heavy knows something that that D needs him to not tell anyone and he will because he's heavy. Oh that is gonna be a fucking sweet angst episode. It will, uh, I fucking hope that happens then. But also it will um, ruin their fucking beautiful bond. They are so cute, like, fucking D's out here busy angsting every fucking day of his life, but then as soon as they're alone in the fucking escape room, he's like, <laughs> play with his stupid baby brother, like, that's adorable. Oh, it's the, it's the best moment. It's just like, it's like shushing him and going into character, and it's like, I'm this person, you're this character, and we're gonna fucking sneak, sneak around, it's like, ah, oh, that is the cutest shit. Oh, uh, that's a good big brother right there. Oh, definitely. And Dee's, uh, and Heavy is, like, so into it. <laughs> yes. And, you know, like, usually when an, when, uh, an adult, like, half-heartedly plays with the kid, they'll just, like, go along with whatever. But Dee's, like, genuinely into it, because he, like, <laughs> he's like, What? No! I'm not this character! I'm fucking Leech! What the fuck? <laughs> 
Oh, the, like, the, this is my head cannon, but like, these boys definitely like play video games together, and there's nothing that can change my mind on it. Oh, fuck yeah. I did actually see a sketch uh, where <laughs> D was just like standing behind Heavy playing some sort of story grooving game and just like <laughs> spoiling shit for him. <laughs> that is so evil! <laughs> I'm telling you, D is like delightfully evil. <laughs> he he thinks he's the villain, but actually he's just kind of a brat. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I'm curious about his relationship with his dad uh, at the current moment because we don't see them interact that much. Like in some situations, it seems to be kind of distant, like in the poker episode. Uh, but also, they were playing poker at that time, so it's not really like an accurate judge. But then, in like some other moments, it seems to be really close. And yeah. clearly, they were very close when D was a toddler, at least, because he was fucking daddy's boy. I think D is just like a tsundere. Like he, I think he looks up yeah. to him, <laughs> like really harshly, but like he's such a tsundere about it. <laughs> he's like he's a tsundere. Fucking masquerading as a kudere, like a deadpan. Yeah. It does seem like he's trying to be a deadpan at, at all times, which just like fails miserably. <laughs> at first, it seems like D has more in common with his dad, and Heavy has more in common with his mom, like pretty harshly. Um, and they definitely do when it comes to looks, but I think actually D is a lot more like Vicky, like personality wise. Uh, obviously is much smarter than Vicky is because Vicky's kind of an idiot, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, I think they have the same temper. I think it's taken up, like, Vicky's temper. They have, like, no patience. Like, Glam is kind of patience incarnate. Like, Glam is patience the person. D gets frustrated absolutely immediately. <laughs> Now that we're kind of, now that we're kind of on the, the topic of parents, when are we going to switch over to them? Because we've been talking about D for a fucking while. Yeah, Glam and D are the ones that have had the most like development, so that's why they're gonna take up the majority of the video, I imagine. I just wanted to mention that in the poker episode where Heavy doesn't. <laughs> It's just like excitedly listening to Vicky read up the rules. It gets him to exactly like the second reaction before he loses his patience about Heavy not knowing this. <laughs> but yeah, we can jump over to to Vic. Yes, because she is a fucking mystery to me. <laughs> she has not had um, a lot of screen time, but she does have a very strong personality. So, she does tend to steal the show when she's there. She do. Yeah, like, I love how they set up her as a character in the first episode. Where we just see her... Uh, the teacher, like, refuses the dad to come to the school. Uh, and, and, like, asks for the mom to come. A gay Vicky. And, like, you just, like, see Vicky, like, next to her motorcycle and just see her shadow with, like... I think it's a bat? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> she was holding something, I'm pretty sure it was a sledgehammer. Yeah, something like that. And, like, it's just like, perfectly set up for her to be like, the big scary person, but like, she's such a goof. <laughs> she is, like, she is like, actually a uh, intimidating force to be reckoned with and all that, but she's also a fucking idiot, like, <laughs> I love her. I'm very tired of the, like, idiot dad trope in media, uh, and I like that they reversed it onto the mom, but also they didn't make her a dick like the idiot dad usually is. Like, she's, she's still mommy, <laughs> even though that she is, like, the most scariest person in all of Russia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, she's definitely tough. Not enough people talk about that scene where she takes a goddamn brick to the face and then fucking brushes it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> she just like fucking rip shit off the wall and just starts fucking like knocking a hole in the wall. <laughs> fucking... Just, she didn't even fucking care. She just fucking got up and she was like, well... Whatever. 
whatever, like, most people would, like, get a concussion, like, break their nose, and, like, I don't know, get a bruise. Vicky already has her <laughs> tiny little cute piggy nose. She can't break it, it's too small. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> it's that it's like no bone <laughs> in the nose anymore, it's just like a little knob. Uh. <laughs> just squish. Uh, and Vicky seems, like, uncomfortable. Like, she's comfortable, like, in herself, like, most of the time, but as soon as uh, she needs to be, like, feminine and wear dresses, she's just like... Ugh. She doesn't seem uh, insecure about it, she just seems to really, like, not like it. But that's the thing I really like about Vicky, is that she is definitely not a typical feminine stereotype, but she's also not boxed in by being not that, you know? Like... She really likes being complimented and admired, like, when Glam is giving her compliments, she's like, <laughs> Yes, miss. <laughs> <laughs> she's just like, tee -hee -hee. <laughs> Yes, she's very cute. She just, um, like, giggles and, like, blushes. Uh, when Glam's showing her his uh, drawings of her, she's all, like, flattered and fucking... <laughs> she's just, like, super into being complimented which, and, like, probably feeling pretty or strong or whatever, which is something that is typically reserved for, like, real stereotypically feminine female characters. And I like that she doesn't have to be a stereotype one way or the other, she's just like, Vic. Strong, independent woman who can take a brick to the face and brush it off. <laughs> yeah! Like, she's a biker, <laughs> and she wears pretty masculine clothes. Uh, I also find it nice to mention that all of her clothes are black, like, even in a cupboard in the background of a scene, like, literally all her clothes are black, <laughs> which is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and it ties nicely in with, like, the edgy, like, the edgy character yeah. tropes. Yeah, and she's an adult, too, so it's, like, not just, like, a teen wearing all black face. It's, it's just, she doesn't want to wear anything that's not black. <laughs> She's like, all right, Glam, I'll fucking wear this fucking Jessica Rabbit cosplay as long as it's black. <laughs> you promised me on the day we got married you would never make me wear anything that wasn't black ever again. <laughs> as long as it's black. <laughs> I do not care as long as it is black. In, in the pilot episode where Glam finds her like the second time she's hanging out with her then boyfriend and she like she's just like she looks like really feminine in that shot like she's fuck just like <laughs> looking up in the sky just like minding her own fucking business and shit but like as soon as she <laughs> like she will not take being like sex sexually harassed because like you can see it in that episode that her quote unquote boyfriend was like trying to get his way by just like making out with her and she, she was like Fuck you! <laughs> I like that she's cl she clearly has like a pretty yes. face, but they're also like they don't restrict the comedy by only drawing her good looking. Like in some fucking scene, she looks <laughs> very grotesque. That's annoying that female characters aren't allowed to look ugly for comedy. Like it's kind of uh, it's like kind of annoying that like women can't look ugly at all sometimes. Like not even like for comedy's sake. Like, not all women are beautiful, but... Or, like, like I guess, like, media beautiful. Like, all women are beautiful no matter That's what. That's true. <laughs> like, a lot of the time, Vicky's face is pretty fucking <laughs> scary. Which is funny. Um, <laughs> and it does actually make me like her more. You know, it wouldn't... Wouldn't be in character for Vicky to not <laughs> look really fucking monstrous sometimes. Like, I feel like, uh... Glam is supposed to be like the like the pretty face, uh, never looks ugly kind of person. Because it's like very typical that the the dad is the one that's supposed to look like more on the uglier side, and the one yeah. that mom is supposed to look pretty. But but like in this case, it's like kind of the opposite. Uh, I feel like Glam's supposed to be like a mix between a pretty boy and like a fucking goofy type character, because <laughs> he is real fucking fucking zany. Like, his face is, like, kind of handsome, but also really goofy. That's, like, also uh, really true that, uh, like, it's kind of the same case with Glam when it comes to, like, the, the pretty face thing, because, like, he's not, like, the most handsome person in the world. Yeah, no. Like, 
he clearly puts a lot into his appearance. Uh, that's that's like my favorite thing about Glam is like he has no shame in liking the things that he likes, and that's awesome. At least Glam and Vicky is like, they like what they like, and there's not anyone in the family that like makes them feel bad about it or have to justify it, and just they just like it and it's great. Like, Vicky only wears black clothes, and she only wears black, uh, black clothes because it's her fucking house and she's an adult and she can do what she wants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's fucking great. Uh, do you have any specific headcanons on Vicky? Uh, I have a headcanon that she wa- she was a lesbian or at least bisexual and she was like getting getting at it with her fucking girlfriend Anna. <laughs> her name is. Oh yeah, um, the blue haired one. Yes. Yeah. The, her name is Anna. Like yes. they had like some kind of sexual tension. <laughs> uh, if I was gonna um, take take my take on that headcanon, so, Vicky has had at least two boys, almost back to back. So she's definitely not a lesbian. She might be bisexual or something like that. But I think it would fit the headcanon better if Anna had a crush on Vicky that wasn't reciprocated. Because Anna definitely has some, like, strong, angry lesbian vibes. She do. Like, she is definitely a lesbian to me. (laughs) They are intense. (laughs) There's actually a lot of people that ship her with uh, chess. I don't don't think I can get onto that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I would I would think Anna maybe had a crush on Vicky and <laughs> I just imagine her at like <laughs> Vicky and Glam's wedding with like funeral morning clothes <laughs> we lost one <laughs> we lost one to the evil clutches we of men we lost one girls <laughs> just like a whole <laughs> fucking brigade of like sad lesbians <laughs> that all had a crush on Vicky <laughs> yes you know what I I fucking stand this. Yeah, Vicky seems like the type of girl that has had too many lesbians fall in love with her. I also have a headcanon that Vicky uh, danced ballet as a child. That would be pretty hilarious. I don't know if she volunteered or she was forced by parents, but like that is my headcanon. I just like remember that I just like created this headcanon because like I had a need to draw something dancing ballet. <laughs> And Vicky was my victim. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> hmm, I need something to dance ballet. Trace his fingers slowly down picture of Vicky's face. <laughs> exactly. I'm just like, shush now, child. It will be over soon. My beautiful goddess. Yeah, there is this um, official art of her as a child on a motorcycle with a little kid that a lot of people think might be her brother. And uh, I'm very interested to see if that is the case a lot of people think he's dead is... like i've seen some real fucking oh. angsty fucking comics and shit about her dead ass brother and that would be so sad <laughs> oh god that would I... hurt my feelings mm... <laughs> no i kind of need her brother to be alive yeah like vicky's life seems like such a fucking mystery because like we have gotten like uh, Glam's backstory, but we haven't gotten Vicky's backstory yet, and like, it's such a mystery, and it scares me. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like we must get more information on her in the next season. Yeah. Like, I will actually just, like, be sad if we don't get more info. <laughs> yeah, I do hope they pick up some of Glam's fucking troubles again, though. I would love it if they did it uh, in the present day, because according to an interview, um, I suspected this to be the case already just because of the way Glam is, but apparently he's never told anyone about his whole home situation with his dad, not even Chess. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Chess just kind of figured it out because he's not an idiot. Yeah, Chess is a fucking smart boy. Yeah, but Vicky is a fucking idiot, so... <laughs> and also, <laughs> she wasn't there, so there's... I think there's, like, next to no chance that she knows or suspects anything about it but it clearly still affects him even as an adult because um, I can't see any other reason why they would make Glam use the exact same words when he's talking to Dee as his dad does to him in the in the flashback episodes other than to show that it's still like affecting him yeah what a perfect transition over to Glam yeah I know right I I was proud (laughs) 
Now let's talk about Glam, the papa of the family. The daddy. Before we get completely off the topic of Vicky, I really fucking love their relationship. Like, I'm so sick and tired of couples in media, especially married couples and especially, especially parents, who don't even like each other. <laughs> yeah, that is like the worst shit to me, like... Why? Like, I understand that it, like, it is its topic uh, of, like, like, domestic abuse and shit like that. But, like, I just want, like, a happy married couple. Yeah. With, like, kids and just, like, be good parents. Yeah, and, like, I can tell that Vicky and Glam are, like, best friends on top of being married. And that's the yeah. kind of relationships that I love to, like, read about or and watch. Like, that's what I find hashtag romantic. Yeah. Um, Just I like... do notice that they set up that Vicky is frustrated that Glam gets things really easily. For example, in the poker episode when she asks him to shuffle cards and he just, like, does it masterfully and she's like... Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> or in the pub episode where she's trying to sink her helmet with... Heavy and she's just like, God damn it! Why, do, why does why does Glam get this so easily? Those are like <laughs> Vicky's two moods are either like, yeah, or like, God fucking damn it. <laughs> and that and that's where D like mirrors his mom. Yeah, it's just like they get so easily frustrated. Yeah, I see them setting up that conflict, and I am so scared. <laughs> like. <laughs> If they fight and don't fix it before they leave the room that they're in at that moment, I will cry. Like, <laughs> I will actually cry. Bro, fucking me too. <laughs> I'll be like, so upset. <laughs> I'll be so sad. <laughs> they have the most beautiful marriage, the most fucking dude bro marriage I've ever seen in a cartoon, and I love it, and I fucking don't want it to end. Um, but I do feel like they're gonna do that because it's a show after all and they probably need some conflict. Yeah, definitely. Hello, it's me, David, from the future. 